In the late 1990s, id Software was the first person shooter keen, with blockbusters like Doom and Quake. So obviously, other devs try to copy the success. Some, like Raven Software, made the excellent Heretic series, while others, like Ukrainian Action Forms, made Chasm the Rift, at the time derided as a poor Quake clone, becoming a very obscure FPS that only freakish collectors like myself will bother to track down and make reviews of. Chasm, like Blood Omen, has no digital re-release, which is quite surprising and annoying as you need a box copy, which weren't ever reprinted, making them quite rare. Getting Chasm to run isn't too difficult, all you need is DOSBox and you can install and run it in no time. The problem is the general performance which is very lacking. The game can run a stunning resolution of 640x480, but regardless of messing around in the config files, it runs very poorly with a choppy, inconsistent frame rate, which simply does not work in a speed intensive shooter. This means bumping it down to 320x240, which is why the footage looks a lot more pixelated than it really ought to. Again, Chasm could really use a re-release on GOG. What will pop out first is a presentation and fairly high quality models and environments, especially for a DOS game from a starting company. For 1997, its graphical fidelity is pretty neat, once you start playing though, you figure out how they managed to pull it all off. The game functionally plays like Doom or Wolfenstein, with flat 2D levels and very few open spaces. Essentially, it's a nice looking corridor shooter. Id Tech allowed sweeping halls and towering cathedral-esque rooms, with multiple stories. No such thing is present in Chasm. Luckily, the threadbare plot allows the player to explore a diverse range of interesting environments. A bunch of aliens called the Time Shifters have attacked humanity by travelling through our past and messing it up. Clearly you have to stop these pricks, so you'll travel back to ancient Egypt, medieval Europe and to the present day, killing everything in your path. Each of the time periods have different enemies, textures and details which give them their own unique feel from fantastical to industrial. The only comparison is obviously Quake with its different dimensions. It's a very simple, linear game where you progress from a position on the map, annihilating everything in your way before reaching a teleporter. There's minor key and switch based puzzles and platforming, it's not wholly different from Doom or Wolfenstein. However, Doom had much more open environments which is mostly absent in Chasm, leading to some major hurdles under combat. Not only that, but some stages are giant, headache inducing mazes that waste your time. It's bizarre, you have realistic interiors with lots of polish along with nonsensical winding maps. It doesn't mesh well. Chasm has the hallmarks of a good running gun shooter. There's just enough enemies and ammo for you to try out the different weapons and you can sprint and strafe away from harm. It's promising stuff but is ultimately let down in its own level design which becomes its greatest foil. It's too tight and restricting with deep, confined hallways and rooms limiting your movement as well as your equipment as too many weapons have powerful splash damage that will jib you along with your target. When half a dozen arseholes are charging down a one way corridor, your strategic options become very limited. The rocket launcher and plasma rifle become very underused by these conflicting design choices. Shadow Warrior and Blood had powerful weapons but the stages were open enough to allow their use. The final levels of the game contain more spacious arenas where your arsenal gets proper treatment and of course these are the best points of the game, just a shame it's at the very end. The weapons themselves aren't anything out of the ordinary, though the double barreled shotgun is sweet as hell. Rather it's the very satisfying and advanced score system that makes Chasm's firefights memorable. Instead of simply falling over or exploding, your opponent will lose arms, legs and their head, resulting in different animations and tactics on their part. When someone loses a limb, they'll crawl around trying to attack you, and if literally disarmed them, they'll try bludgeoning you. Puts that whole Monty Python Black Knight scene into perspective, right? The harder and more inspired moments of the game are the boss fights at the end of each act, which requires some sort of environmental hazard to dispose of. This can be sucking them into a repeller blade or burning them with sunlight. The solution can be unfairly vague, like the Sphinx, which you're told to destroy, but actually you're meant to destroy a separate part of it, ignoring the giant beast lunging at you. Chasm is also a fairly short game, clocking in at about 5 hours, which along with the lack of unique features, makes it hard for me to recommend. It's not a bad game, it's quite decent actually. The big problem is its rarity and these technical issues outweighing the positives. While it didn't crash much, the mouse would lock up occasionally, forcing a complete reset, and the frame rate really degrades the fidelity of the combat. 
If Chasm gets a re-release on GOG or Steam for a decent price, go for it. But unless you're craving 90s FPS and you want more Quake, then I can't recommend this one.